Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at previously used CPA questions. Those questions were released by the AICPA. AICPA is the organization that administered the CPA exam. Those questions are the real deal. Now, they may or may not appear word for word on future exam, but I could assure you the concepts, the format will be tested again and again and again you can bet on that we're going to be covering few regulation questions as always i would like to remind you to connect with me on linkedin if you haven't done so youtube is where you would need to subscribe i have 1500 plus accounting auditing finance and tax lectures this is a list of all the courses that i cover including income tax and cpa questions on my website you will have access to additional information and resources such as powerpoint slides true false multiple choice notes CPA questions, 2,000 plus CPA questions, and hundreds of exercises that, that are considered quasi-CPA simulations. Let's take a look at the first question. Parent gave securities with an adjusted basis of $10,000 and a fair market value of $9,000 to a child. Fair enough. Later, the child sold the securities for $7,000. What is the child's basis for the securities? So the parent gave it to them. The parents had a basis of 10. When they gave it to the child, it was at 9,000. What's gonna happen is this. When you have a gift situation, and I have plenty of lecture, I have one whole course, one whole lecture, 24 minutes about basis of gift. You have to know those bases very well. So what do you have to know? We have to know that you don't know the basis until you sell the asset. So simply put, here's what happened. This is the 10,000, which is the fair market value. I'm sorry, the 10,000 was the adjusted basis. The 9,000 was the fair market value. This is what we know. Now, we sold the securities for seven. Now, here's what's gonna happen. When we sell the securities, we sell the securities right here. Guess what? The line that's gonna be closest to this line will be the basis. Which line is the closest? This is the line that's the closest. Therefore, the basis is 9,000. Simply put, if, the, if they told you the asset was sold for 12,000, so that instead of seven, and I can assure you this question is very common. If they told you the asset was sold for 12, which line is the closest to 10? 12 is 10, so the basis will be 10. Now, let's see what happened if, the, if they told you it was sold something in between what do we mean something in between the child sold the asset between nine thousand and ten thousand so it sold it nine thousand three hundred or nine thousand seven hundred in between nine thousand and ten thousand then the basis equal to the sale the basis will be equal to seven thousand if we sold i'm sorry the basis equal to the sale, whatever the sale is. If we sold it for 9,300, the basis is 9,300. If we sold it for 9,700, the basis is 9,700. Simply put, if we sell it in this orange area, we have zero gain, zero loss. That's the whole point. And again, I have 24 minute lecture about gift basis. It's very important that you need to know for the exam. Let's take a look at this question. In the current year, V exchange unimproved land for an apartment building. The land has a basis of 300,000, a fair market value of 420, and was encumbered by a $100,000 mortgage. The apartment building had a fair market value of 550 and was encumbered with, by $230,000 mortgage. Each party assumed the other's mortgage. What's V's basis in the office building? Okay, so V gave up the land, gave up the land and received a building. Okay, now this topic is extremely important on the exam. And by the way, what do I mean by chapter 13 income tax course? It means this is where I cover the material. So this is called non um, uh, like kind property exchange, like kind, which is non taxable transaction. It's very important that you are familiar with this. This is chapter 13, and I have a 50 minute lecture. Actually, I have more than 50 minute lecture about this topic, but you know 50 minutes just to kind of get you used to it then we work two or three more examples so the point is you have to be very familiar with this now there's two formulas that you can use to solve this question one i call the fair value formula and the other one is called the uh, code or what it's called the cost basis formula whatever you want you you want to use it's up to you so i'm going to give you both formulas and show you how you can solve this question to find 
the basis in a non-exchange property. So here's what's going to happen. So if, you, if we're using the code method, so we're going to go the adjusted basis of the new, which is what we're looking for, equal to the adjusted basis of the old. Make sure the spend works properly. The adjusted basis of the old plus 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 the adjusted basis of boot given we're going to explain those okay plus any recognized gain so if you recognized gain you're going to add to your basis minus fair market value of boot received minus any recognize loss so this is the law not the long formula but this is called the code approach or the basis approach so let's take a look and see what we have well the adjusted basis of the old we are given an asset that's worth three hundred thousand dollar plus the adjusted basis of boot giving are we giving any boot this is the question here are we given any boot and the answer is yes boot is when we give cash hold on a second we didn't give any cash but in the problem they told you, you assume the mortgage of the other party. Assuming the mortgage of the other party, it means you gave them cash. So you're going to add 230000 plus any recognized gain. We're not going to recognize any gain, although we do have a gain, which is the gain is if they ask you about the realized gain. The realized gain is 120, which is 420 minus 300000 but they're not asking us about this. So we did not recognize any gain minus fair market value of boot received did we receive any boot here in this example and the answer is yes if they relieved us of the one hundred thousand dollar technically we received the boot but it's not taxable okay one hundred thousand dollar minus the recognized loss there is no recognized loss so all in all let's take a look to see what we have so we subtract the fair market value of the boot received so we have three hundred thousand plus two thirty Minus 100,000, so that's 530, uh, minus, minus 100 is 430, 430,000. So the basis of the new property is 430,000. Now this is one method. Okay, let's take a look at the fair market value approach. So under the fair market value approach, you're going to take the fair market value of the asset received, fair market value of asset received which is 550 and you're going to deduct from it minus gain deferred and you're going to add to it loss deferred now if you don't know i mean if you if you're not sure what what's the logic behind those um you can go to my again i showed you my lesson you can go there and i show you in details why you add why you deduct the gain deferred and add the loss the third but i'm just going to go ahead and solve the problem now but always you can go to my chapter 13. so what is the deferred gain i told you that we have a realized gain of 120. why 100 uh, what's i told you we have a realized gain of 120 which is 420 minus 300,000. we have a realized gain of 120. this is realized how much of that was recognized just a second ago i told you none of it is recognized therefore all of it is deferred therefore i subtract the deferred gain and there is no deferred loss 520 550 minus 120 equal to 430 which is this is the fair market value approach you want to make sure you are comfortable with this pro problem like this i can assure you you will see this problem on the cp on the cpa exam day either in a multiple choice format or a simulation I'll bet with you that's the case. So make sure you know this. Otherwise, go to my chapter 13, subscribe to my website, and there's plenty of exercises and to help you master this. Let's take a look at this exercise. Lemon owned 2,000 shares of Spectral Corporation common stock. They were purchased year one at 1050 per share. So, okay. In year four, Lemon received a 5% non-taxable dividend. In year five, the stock split two for one, in the current year, Lemon sold 800 shares. What's the basis of the 800 shares? Okay, fair enough. So here's what's going to happen. We originally paid $2,000 times 1050. So that's, I believe that's 21,000. If my math is right, that's equal to 21,000. 
that's equal to 21,000. So this is what we paid for. This is what we paid for. We paid 21,000 for 2,000 shares. Then we received a 5% stock dividend. So 5, 2,000 times uh, one times, let's see, 5% first and add it times 5%. 5% 50 plus 50 equal to 100. 100 new shares. Now we have 2,100 shares. Then we got a stock split in year 5, 2, 4, 1. It means they double our shares. That's 4,200 shares. So what's happening is when, when what we originally paid 1050 per share, our basis now is way less than 1050. So how do we know the basis per share? If we take 21,000 divided by 4,200, let's do the math. Let's do the math real quick. So we invested originally $21,000. We invested we invested twenty one thousand dollar and we have four thousand two four thousand two hundred shares so our basis per stock our basis per share is five dollar per share if we sold eight hundred well we're gonna take this five dollars times eight hundred shares equal to four thousand therefore the answer is four thousand the answer is four thousand Okay, so simply put, you invested the original amount and you received more shares. As a result, your basis goes down. Actually, your basis are, you know, they're going to be less than half. Why less than half? Because you doubled the shares and you receive a 5% extra. So, so yes, so that makes sense. I'll be confident that this is the right answer. Let's take a look at this question. Again, this is from chapter 13. It seems those questions appear from chapter 13, which is basis for property. Decker, a 62-year-old single individual, sold his principal residence for the net amount of half a million after selling expenses. If there's any selling expenses, you can deduct. Decker bought the house 15 years ago and occupied it until it was sold. On the date of the sale, the, the house had a cost basis of 200000 Within six months, Decker purchased a new house for 600000 what amount of gain should Decker recognize from the sale of the house? Okay, so first of all, here you have to know s simple rule section 121. Basically, what does that mean? If you're, if you're single, you sell, you sell your principal residence. And if you live there within the past two years, within the past five years, you can waive, you can not have taxable 250,000 if you are single. If you're married filing jointly, you can have up to half a million. So we're out of we're not married filing jointly we're dealing with a single individual so they sold it for five hundred thousand and here they told you within six months Decker purchased a new house you can ignore all of this 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 is used to be the old rules okay they're trying to confuse you so so they received five hundred thousand the house has a cost basis of two hundred thousand the realized gain is three hundred thousand now three hundred thousand is here but that's they're not they're not asking you about the realize this is the realize they're not asking you about this if you realize what's asked, you'll be at yeah, 300,000. They're asking about the recognized. Well, the recognized is if you realize 300,000, you're going to able to waive or deduct or, you know, get a, get a waiver for 250. What you're left with is 100,000. I'm sorry, 50,000. And the answer is 50,000. So be careful. It's not zero because it's only you can waive or have tax free 250,000 as single. Therefore, it's not zero. Okay, immediately you can cross out zero because it's more than 250. And I don't know how they came up with 175. I'm not going to confuse you, but yes, that's out. So the answer is 50,000. Let's take a look at this question. This question from chapter 21. It seems this is from partnership, I assume. Chapter 21. V, a 50% partner in bold partnership. V tax basis in bolds January 2nd, year 1, is 60,000. Bold did not have any unrealized receivable appreciated property or property that has been contributed by its partners. That's fine. On December 31st, year one, Bold made a 10,000 non-liquidating cash distribution to each partner. So distribute $10,000 non-liquidating. The Bold partnership income tax reported the following items for year one. Tax exempt interest income, 80,000. Dividend income, 12,000. And the question is, what are to what, what total amount of gross income from bold should be included in valid year one adjusted gross income well it seems there are three things there's cash distribution cash distribution you have to know it's not taxable so that's out tax exempt interest income well it's telling you it's tax exempt interest income it's not included dividend income is dividend deductible yes it is 
Do we have 12,000? No, we don't because we're a 50% owner. You're going to get 50% of the dividend because you're a 50% owner. Therefore, 6,000 will be included in your gross income for Val's gross income, not in your gross income. So basically, this is how you compute this. Questions like these, I can, I'll bet with you. You will see those on the regulation exam. So make sure you are familiar with this. In the next session, we will work additional questions. As usual, I would like to remind you to visit my website, subscribe. You're going to study for your CPA exam only once in your lifetime. Invest. Take the time to do it. Okay? If you have any questions, I'm always here to help you, and good luck.